My name is Christopher Landon, Anthony Streeter, and today you have the privilege of witnessing me drinking at Moe's. All right, everybody, taking time out before we get this show started that uh, I want to thank Reaper Apparel for having Dranamos be a brand ambassador for their clothing line. They got good stuff. They got t-shirts. They got hoodies. They got beans. They got lots of great stuff, encouraging everybody to break out of their comfort zone, live their best self, and Hey, it's something I try to live every day. Now, be sure when you go and you're finishing filling out your order, use the code Drinking at Mo's, get 10% off, and the link and the code will both be in the description. Let's right, fucking everybody. go. Welcome, Drinking at Mo's. Big Mo here. You know, drill YouTube, like, subscribe, share, comment, all the good stuff because. That YouTube algorithm is a pain in the ass. Most places you can find audio podcasts too. Today, I am excited to have with me Christopher Landon Anthony Streeter. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. I just got home from work. I'm feeling good, looking great. Happy to be here, man. Happy to be here talking to Big Mo. Hey, uh, pleasure having you here. You know, hell, I got home from work a couple hours ago and uh, well i may not necessarily have the looking great aspect down but hey oh come on <laughs> you're looking fantastic oh yeah yeah i've I'm, I'm i'm proud of it i hell i've had uh at a well a show that i'm actually going back to here before we jump into everything else i actually had a guy, well, I'm hoping to have him on soon, but uh, one part of the second gear crew, the, the one called Manders, yeah, he was at the show, it was at the meet and greet, and somebody next to him was complimenting my beard, and I said, he, like, asking how long have I been growing it, I'm like, well, I don't know, it's been a long time since I've been clean shaven, and I, I joked with him, man, me with my bald head, if I were clean shaven, my head would look like a penis. And then, and then, man, Manders just but like he was practically rolling on the floor laughing. I'm like, yes, got him. Yeah, I I got him. I love it. Hell, I've I've gotten him laughing with a couple of other things. So hey, okay, that's it. all all good. Yeah, like it's so I'm going. Are you, are you trying to are you trying to go for like maximum length? Are you trying to go for girth? Is it in a good spot? And you're maintaining. What's what's the goal there? Um, you know, my, my wife one time asked me how long I planned on growing it before we got married, and I just jokingly said Duck Dynasty. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. She said she'd trim it in my sleep. If it okay. got that long. Have so you woken like, up with little little curlies around yet, or not yet? Um, I've, I've definitely had times where I was half asleep, and all of a sudden I feel her trying to braid my beard and i'm like what are you doing yeah 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 but yeah right about here maybe a little bit longer that's about where my my sweet spot with it okay well let me i got one more question for you i'm just curious oh, yeah. what what goes into the, your beard maintenance like what do you do for it to keep it looking that that plump and nice well i do have some uh well, some stuff I get from the place I get it trimmed at that, uh, you know, some beard oils. My wife and I went to a farmer's market and this stuff has been working good. That this beard oil that literally takes a year to make. Whoa. Like all the ingredients, it takes a year to make the whole thing. So that's been working good. And then I'm forget there's some like putty stuff that. I like to, you know, get in there to keep it from, you know, kind of getting too poofed out over yeah, like here. Albert Einstein, like, right, yeah. just disheveled poof. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that. That, when, 
you know, when it gets to that point where it starts getting a little poofy, I'm like, I think I need to go get it trimmed again. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, yeah. And hell, we talk about a little bit of everything here, but we're also here to talk about you. And one thing that I like to start off with everybody here is like, what got you started as a fan? And then what got you started, you know, when you finally said, you know what, I'm doing this. Yeah. So what got me started with a fan? You know, a lot of uh, people ask, like, what's your first memory of wrestling? I think my first memory of wrestling, I'm sure it was before this, but the, the first thing that like pops out in my mind is I'm a little kid, I'm flipping through the channels and all of a sudden I, I flip on this channel and there's like this arena full of people going absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. And there's this beer truck, this bald guy in this beer truck oh. driving down to the ring. There's people yeah. in the ring and I, I'm just like, okay, what is this? <laughs> and boom, Stone Cold gets out and starts spraying the rock and Vince and Shane and all them with, with beer. Oh, it's complete yeah. chaos. And it's just, it was like utter, just good no, chaos. Yeah. That's the best way to describe it. And so um, that's the first memory I have. Like I said, I'm sure I saw some stuff before that, but that's the first memory I had. So from that point on, man, I was hooked. And uh, as a kid, I wasn't really allowed to watch wrestling because I would get so fired up. I'd start, you know, elbow dropping everything I could you know, find I start trying to give people stone cold stunners and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I had to sneak it, in, you know, and so um, that I think made me like it even more because I had this special relationship where, as a young kid, man, I'm like sneaking watching <laughs> wrestling. I just had to watch it. I had to see what happened next. Oh yeah, so oh that's, yeah. That's what really got me into it. And then, as far as it's kind of a it's kind of a long story is how how I got into it. I'll give you some cliff notes here, but. Yeah. So I did most of my undergrad um, in Nebraska. And so the guys, yeah. And so the guys I ended up becoming friends with and living with throughout college, huge wrestling fans. And me growing up, huge fan as a kid, got away from it in high school. And then when I, you know, became good friends with these guys, got right back into it. And so um, at one point, one of my buddies, he was like, hey, would you go to this wrestling camp with me? And I was like, of course. Yeah, let's leave tomorrow, you know. And um, so we went to Harley Race's seminar camp that's a week long, and that was in, like, 2013. And so it did that, and that was incredible. I was like, yes, this is something I absolutely want to do because, like most people, I think, coming from a smaller town in a smaller area, I didn't have any concept of how one becomes a professional wrestler. And so we did this camp. It was great, but this was the closest place to train and it was like seven hours away from where I was going to school. And so it wasn't really realistic at that point. So um, fast forward a little bit later, I get into grad school in Phoenix, where I'm at now. And I go, all right, I have to figure out if there's a place to train. Sure enough, there was. I started. Uh, it went well, obviously. And the rest is is history from there. That, that is awesome. And, you know, the, the whole part of being a fan, that I pretty much relate to that because – you know, it was a little before the storm cold beer truck thing, but yeah, I I just remember seeing the crowds and the way they would react to some of the people coming out there. I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. But then yeah. as I got older, I would start I would get a little fired up. And my parents would try to discourage like they would try to find different things for me to be doing. But then there'd be times where I would be there live as it was going on. And I just have the, the remote and that last channel button got worn out because yeah. it was during the, <laughs> the whole Monday night wars era yep. where, you know, I, I would literally tune in. I'd have, I'd go to nitro. I'd turn it right to the channel for raw and then literally commercial. Okay. Click. Yep. Click. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, yeah. So me like not being allowed to watch it, the channel it came on for me, I don't remember if it was like 30 or 31, but the channel right next to it was Nickelodeon. And so every time I'd hear footsteps coming down, I'd hit, hit back hit to, right Nickelodeon. to Nickelodeon. For some reason, SpongeBob was always on. And so my <laughs> mom would always be like, man, you really love that SpongeBob. I'm like, yep. Why don't you get out of here now? You know, <laughs> so because every time she came down, I was watching SpongeBob. <laughs> 
That's awesome. And, you know, you, you brought up, and it got me curious because I, well, I didn't have this in my notes, but I'm like, you brought it up undergrad in Nebraska. Yeah. Where? Barney, are you familiar? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I live in Omaha. Oh, come on. Yeah. Okay. So you're very familiar. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, yeah I've I been through there quite often. Yep, I, I did most of my undergrad. I graduated from uh, University of Nebraska, Kearney, UNK. The school slogan is you can't spell drunk without UNK. Yes, that's the thing about there, yeah. Yep, so I had I had uh, about three years in Kearney. Um, I finished, you know, did most of my undergrad, finished up there. And uh, and yeah, that was, that was where I did undergrad. Good old Nebraska, spent time in Omaha, went to the College World Series, spent plenty of time in Lincoln. Um, and then obviously, you know, you meet people, everyone's coming from all over the state, it's lots of small towns. So I have some oh, experience yeah. in a lot of the small towns around the state as well. Oh yeah. My hell, my hometown is about an hour South of here down in Nebraska city. Yeah. So, okay. So yeah. I, this I whole area. Say we drove through Nebraska city on the way to Eldon, Missouri for the wrestling camp with Harley race. And then if we ever went to like Kansas city or St. Louis or anything like that, driving through okay. Nebraska city. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a common stop right there. I know they got a big truck stop right before the interstate now. Yeah. Yeah. But, but that's awesome. I I don't know why I wasn't expecting to hear about Nebraska during this time, but hey, <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love yep. it. Yeah. 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 So, for. A lot of people don't know about Nebraska because, I mean, I lived there for college and then I haven't really gone back or spent much time there since. But it's like I always tell people Nebraska has the absolute nicest people in the history of the world. I, everyone there was so kind, so generous. And they're like, so what did you do? And I'm like, well, <laughs> per the school slogan, I was really good at drinking. And then I was really good at school because there was nothing else to do. And so that's hence, yeah. you know, getting into grad school right away to a doctorate program from there. Um, and I bartended through through college too. So it was drinking and it and it was going to school. <laughs> Man, it, it sounds sounds a lot like the oh, it reminded me of when I when I first got to Navy boot camp and we'd have to ship back uh, like the vast majority of our stuff. Yeah. And we we got to where I wrote down the address and put the put the box down in front of the guys and they're like, Nebraska, people live there. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And hell, right now there's even a budding uh well, ever since I got back from the Navy, a budding independent wrestling scene here. We got at least two promotions in Omaha itself. And then within a couple hours, we got more like sprinkled through, you know, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, all over. Yep. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. So you get, there's a little, it's like a little hub that's kind of developing over there, it seems like. Definitely. Definitely been a little bit of a hub. Now, I, I like talking with my guests about what kind of inspired their in ring personas. And I've in some of the pictures, you know, going through social media and stuff, I've been noticing it looked uh, reminiscent to me of, you know, Ric Flair with the robe that I was seeing and stuff. Yeah. Is that kind of where where we were going there? Yeah. So I mean, as far as like in ring persona, I'm I'm really myself in a lot of ways. Like right, and I, and I don't hide who I am. I live in Scottsdale, which is a very nice place to live in the Phoenix area. I'm a doctor. I'm good looking. I'm in really good shape. I'm always tan. And so those are things I don't hide. And so I want to accentuate what makes me me. And that comes with a grandiose presentation, the robe, the hair, the tan, the white teeth, the smile, the, the, the body, everything kind of comes along with it. And, you know, if I was to go out and like a cutoff, jean vest that wouldn't really fit with who i am personally and yeah. so the robe more accentuates who i am and more represents who i am and that's kind of how that all developed and came about that 
that does seem kind of fitting and going along with, you know, how a lot of people I've noticed feel when it comes to wrestling and in-ring personas is the ones that people get drawn to are the ones that it's like, that's an extension of themselves. Like that's, it's not just something that they are in front of the camera and then there's something else off, like completely polar opposite. Right. Like I know Stone Cold, who, I mean, we kind of talked about for a little bit. My, one of my personal all-time favorites mentioned that that Stone Cold persona was literally just him turned up to like 11. Yeah, right, exactly. And so I'm a huge fan of the older stuff, right? So a lot of what I watch is like 80s, 90s. My favorite is Mid-South. I love watching Mid-South because all the guys there were, for my estimation, you know, themselves. And they are all athletes and they're all tough guys. And so just, you know, keeping with kind of how it seemed then. Obviously, with WWF back then, there were over-the-top characters. Yeah. But a lot of the stuff I watch is just the, you know, people being seemingly themselves with the volume turned up, so to speak. And so oh, yeah. that's what I like. That's what feels most congruent with what professional wrestling is to me. And therefore, that's what I want to bring it, bring out with my flavor of wrestling. Oh, yeah. I That is the type that kind of draws me in. The like nowadays with the characters that they kind of just ooze that intensity. Like you see them walk out. Like one of my current favorites right now, actually over in Japan, Tomohiro Ishii. He like you see him walking to the ring, especially like if he has a title at the time. The look on his face is like you have to damn near kill him to take that title off of him. Yeah, that and. Samoa Joe's another guy right now with the sure. ROH TV title run that he's on. You like you just see him and you're like you're gonna have to. F- well, I don't really uh, judge on language here, but you'd have to fucking kill him okay. to take that damn title off of him. Exactly, and so yeah, like when I when I come through the curtain, I'm in the robe and I'm looking great. I'm all oiled up. I've got the you know the tans looking great. The hair's looking great. I, I smirk because I know no matter who I'm going to be in the ring with, I know I can outthink, I know I can outwork, and I know I can out um, athleticize essentially, you know. And so it's just it, no matter what look they have on their face, whether it's intensity, whether it's fear, whatever it is, I got to smirk because I know they're not going to do anything about what I'm bringing to the table. Oh yeah, going along the lines of, I mean, you mentioned uh, being a fan of the, uh, you know late the eighties style. I know one of my favorites that kind of went along that lines, maybe not so much with the robes and stuff, but definitely people wouldn't really be able to handle him too much, but going along with the intensity bruiser Brody. Sure. One of my out, like just the way, good Lord, just, I remember watching the crowd reactions to him. And I'm like, oh my god! I I don't. This guy. I'm both excited and scared. Yeah, right. And either way, what you're saying is he's evoking a response and emotion from you, right? Yep. Because of the presentation he has, and so yep. that's going to be different for every single person. If everyone went out and tried to be Bruiser Brody, there'd be a lot of posers out there, right? Because nobody's going to yeah. be Bruiser Brody. You have to find your own flavor and how are it you going to emit that same intensity through your own style and through your own yeah. character, through your own personality, right? Oh, yeah. There, there, there's, there's different ways that people can, you know, still ooze that intensity but not go full-on Bruiser Brody with it. They're like, you know, you can start oozing that intensity more when you're in the ring with your style, and then, you know, you can be, you know, the flashy Ric Flair robe type thing on the way out, kind of like almost almost playing a little trick on the person they're like oh this guy's just some flashy thing here but then you get in there and you show them what you can really do yeah that's exactly right yeah and it's almost it's almost kind of a 
not a defense strategy, but maybe a, it's like a, a mind trick or tactic, right? I'm going to lull you to false sleep. sense of security. There, well said. I'm going to lull you to sleep with my looking and pre presentation as a pretty boy. And you're going to think I'm just going to roll over this person. And then you got another thing coming, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah, I like it. Yep. Now, some of the promotions that I've been seeing in, I'm familiar with a lot of them. Uh, go over a few of them. I've actually had the promoter on for this first one. We did a preview of their Mecca show, but FSW, they've been doing some pretty big things like out on the West Coast, like the names that they've been able to bring in. Yeah. And the, on a consistent basis, too. Yeah. Yep. It's, but, it's, a, it's a great place to work and. You know, out here, it, it, there's definitely a big wrestling scene in the Southwest, right? You have oh yeah, Phoenix Championship Wrestling and another a, a number of other promotions in Arizona. You have FSW and a few others in Vegas. And then you have a bazillion in Southern California. Oh FSW, yes, that's where I got started on independent wrestling. Was out in SoCal. Okay, yeah, perfect. And so you know, FSW, especially being the at the pinnacle of that in Vegas. Great place to work. Like you said, lots and lots of prominent people, lots of people who are on TV right now have come yeah. through FSW, either trained through that program or, you know, they brought in multiple times. And so oh, you can go on forever with the list of names. And so great place to work. And, um, you know, very fortunate, not surprising that, you know, I've already been a champion in, in that promotion. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, great place to work. And, and I really enjoy uh, the opportunities they pro provide as well. No, most definitely they do amazing work. And you bring up, I, I for some reason didn't have this one on my notes here, but you bring up Phoenix Championship Wrestling. I actually have one of the, well, I just recorded with them yesterday. One of the guys that trains at the school affiliated there with the G Gabriel Gallo. Oh, yeah. Old Gallo. I yeah. just talked to him yesterday. Yeah, I saw that. I think uh, either you were here both of you shared something on social media and I saw that. So yeah, yeah, that, he, that, was, uh, that was awesome. Big part of the school there, big part of the promotion. Yeah, he's he's quite the character. Him and I've had that some uh, some good times together for sure. Oh yeah, he quite yeah. the character. We had a great talk. Now, this next one I've been seeing a lot more lately. Like, okay, I'll admit there's some promotions that I became familiar with when I was out there in SoCal, then became familiar with more when I had IWTV the first go around. I had to cut it out mm -hmm. for a while for you know, financial, whatever. I got it back though. And PCW ultra, one of the yeah. promotions I've been seeing a lot for, and I've been definitely more curious to try to, you know, keep up with a little more with those guys yeah that's so i talk about you know the three big cities phoenix vegas and la fsw definitely the top promotion in vegas pcw ultra head and shoulders you know for my money the top promotion in southern california it's the only one i'll work for and just incredible the presentation the professionalism the people that go through there as well and the the crowds they're able to draw are absolutely incredible. And so yeah, I, what a spot. Yeah, I was just going to say, I've been seeing that. Yeah. And I don't not necessarily agree with this, but all the shows are available for free on Remix TV. Like, so you can go back. They're not released like live or, you know, right away, but within a couple of weeks they're released. And there's a huge, huge catalog of wrestling on there. And they also have Defy Wrestling on there. And so, you know, it's, they make it really easy to keep up if you're not able to go to the shows live in Southern California. I, I might have to keep my eye on that because, like I said, I've been curious. I've been hearing loads of great things. I've been seeing clips here and there. It was like, okay, this is a place I want to keep my eye on. Oh, for sure. It's, again, for, I think they're on, in January, they're having their eight-year anniversary. Uh, right. So I think it's eight years and it's from the very beginning until now, it's just been a pinnacle of excellent, excellent professional wrestling on the yeah. independent circuit. Oh yeah. I and mean, there's so many independent promotions out there 
that don't even make it any half that long. Right. Right. And their, their eight year anniversary. That's awesome. Yep. So another place that's just an awesome place to, to be able to work. Um, very, very fun. Definitely. And, you know, this next one, I've heard little bits about some shows up this way, but, you know, I don't think a lot of people really think about pro wrestling in Alaska. Yeah. Wrestle pro Alaska. Yeah. I, I've been I've been lucky enough to actually be up in Alaska. That funny little short story before go into them. Before my wife and I went on our honeymoon, the only two states on the western half of the United States that I have not been to were Washington and Alaska. We went on an Alaskan cruise that left out of Seattle. So I got a now I've been to the entire western half of the United States. Yep, crossed them off. Oh yeah, yeah. You, what's I mean, what's Russell Pro Alaska like for you? It so again a little yeah a little story here. I like you. Last thing I thought of when I associated uh, wrestling with any place was Alaska, and so I was placed in Alaska for a year for my residency. And you, you had Gallo on yesterday. He had a contact up there that he knew that ran wrestling shows, and so when I was going up there for wrestling, he put me in contact and there's a number of um, smaller promotions that ran that I was able to work with pretty consistently the whole year I was up there. And then yeah. wrestling pro did their first show up there. This was, this would have been April of 2019. Um, they came up there for their first show and I was able to work for them up there while I was, while I was living there still. And it was an incredible experience. They ran this, um, this arena called the Sullivan arena in Anchorage. And it was an amazing experience they had tons of names on the show and um just to be able to do that in in the place you know right 10 minutes away from where i lived was was such a cool experience and it was kind of funny because i was i was like they sent someone up there earlier in the year to kind of scout to see which local talent was going to be um they were going to feature on the show and i was the first one chosen and so i was just laughing like not again not surprised but the transplant that's not from Alaska, and yet I'm the first local Alaska <laughs> talent to be on the show. Shocker, right? <laughs> yeah, that is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, awesome experience, especially how early it was in my in my wrestling career. Right? I'd had oh, yeah a year of a uh, little less than a year of matches under my belt at that point, and so to get that opportunity was was an awesome experience. Oh, I definitely had an experience to never forget, and you know. Heck, I've been seeing the the event posters and advertisements for some of the shows they've had. Good Lord. We talk about, you know, FSW bringing in big names. They're doing the same thing up there. And you're thinking, yep. big names going up to wrestle in Alaska? Yeah. <laughs> no offense to Alaska. It's just like yeah. you said. It's, it's just one of those places that you don't really envision big wrestling shows. Right. And so like I went up there with the with the excitement, the goal of doing the fishing, the hunting, the outdoorsy stuff. And I did tons of that and had an awesome time with that. And also I got to tack on wrestling in the Sullivan Arena in Anchorage in front of a ton of people with all these other prominent names that, that were on the card. Like, yeah, it was mm -hmm. what a bonus to have, you know. Oh, totally, totally. Now I have two categories here that I like to put into the show. One's a bit of a name game where I name off some people that, you know, digging through social media and stuff that I've either seen, you know, event posters that you've been advertising or, you know, you've shared a ring or a locker room with these people and you give me some quick thoughts on them. Sure. Like the kind of like word association sort of thing. Uh, sort sort of thing. Yeah, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be one word, but basically, perfect. Let's All do right. it. First one, Sin Bodhi. Sin Bodhi, weird, extremely intelligent, tough to figure out, good opponent. Happy to say that I uh, I got the win over him when we wrestled. It, yeah, I can definitely think uh, a little little weird, you know. But hey weird can be good sometimes and you know everything that i hear about him 
and the stuff that he's contributing to, you know, the independent scene, definitely an intelligent individual. So you can't knock him there for sure. Well, and like, think about how long he's been around and when he came up and that the too. things he's done in wrestling. And so people like that who have most people, not all, but most people who have been able to be successful over that long of a period of time, they're going to have a whole plethora of experiences and they're going to have cool. a whole plethora of knowledge and so many things to teach you. And, and it's just, you know, let alone sitting in a locker room, but wrestling with them is a complete learning experience. And so, yeah, Ooh. definitely, definitely weird, definitely very intelligent and um, great, great match. Happy to say that uh, I came out on top with him. All right. Next person. Uh, definitely an intimidating individual. There's been a couple videos recently that have come out of, you know, him gorilla pressing a guy from the ring into a wall. And then another of him knocking out a fan trying to get into the ring. I'm talking about Jacob Fatu. Yeah, I for my money, one of the most talented, one of the best professional wrestlers in the world, no matter what level today. Um Someone who is must see TV, no matter if he's wrestling in front of 500 people or 20,000 people. Oh, if yeah. you have the chance to see him, please see him. Absolutely incredible. And uh, looking forward to, to working with him at some point. Oh, yeah. There, there's an in. Well, I talked about a show that I'm going to be going to here soon. Unfortunately, he's not on there, but another individual that I've been curious about. He's not on the list here, but one of those people that I definitely put along those lines of must see. Like when you, if you get the chance to watch him in a match, you, I'm, and I'm talking about the bounty hunter Brian Keith. Yeah, he's going to be at the show in Des Moines for Sammy Callahan's promotion, Wrestling yeah. Revolver, okay. that on December second. A friend of mine and I are both going to be going. We got our meet and greet passes. We got our tickets ready to go. I'm excited because, you know, especially recently with the stuff that he's done with, you know, AEW, you know, getting on the national scale, I'm, I'm excited to finally get to see him live. Yeah. He, Brian Keith is cooking right now and just, just a lot of respect for, for what he's doing. I think he, has a great approach to it. I think he's another one who's really, really fun to watch and um, someone who's very original in what he's doing. And it's, um, it's been awesome, you know, being on working with him in, in ultra and, and other shows across uh, oh, yes. California like that. And so, you know, being able to, you know, be with him in the locker room has been, it's been fun getting known for sure. Oh, I can, I can imagine you bring up a, a thing that I, I've talked with a few people and a few promotions about, uh, originality and uniqueness in professional wrestling, especially these days, is kind of few and far between. Yeah, and Brian Keith definitely has that unique originality with him. That I mean, it's both refreshing, but then, like I mentioned, with the uh, being gravitating towards those intense individuals. He is very much that. Yeah. And, and, you know, he's someone when you watch him, it's like, I'm not sure exactly what I'm seeing, but I can't look away. And I, yeah. I, I got to see what he's going to do. Right. And so just, again, it, it goes back to congruence, right? The presentation, what he wears to the ring, how he wrestles, how he carries himself is all mm -hmm. in perfect alignment with itself. And so someone like that is someone who's going to find success in this business. And he's, oh, yeah. you know, hit the nail on the head across the board. Oh, most definitely. Now, these next two, the last two on this name game here, two people that I saw both on one of the posters I saw for that uh, sh those shows in Alaska. First one, Colt Boom Boom Cabana. Yeah. Uh, I mean, again, someone who's been around for a long time. So, you know, you got to give credit where credit's due. A little, little bit of controversy, but who doesn't have some controversy in professional it, it, wrestling, yeah. right? This, is, yeah. this, uh, this business is founded on 
quote unquote carnies, right? And so um, not at all saying that he's necessarily a carny. There are some accusations that say one thing, some accusations that say another thing, but you got to give respect where it's due. You know, he's been around for a long time and made a pretty nice career, so it seems out of, out of professional yeah. And I mean, there is a rather wise individual that once said, controversy creates cash. Yep, C equals C. Yep. Next yeah. one, a, another guy that uh, doing some pretty good things. Some might say that the current character can be seen as that little annoying chihuahua. I'm talking about Sanjay Dutt. He's doing okay. good. He's doing good. But the current character, the way they have him going, I mean, he's doing his job. He's kind of that little just yep. going. But I love it. I love it. He's he's getting a reaction out of people, so it's good. Exactly. Yeah. So Sanjay, he's actually the person that Wrestle Pro sent up to Alaska to do the scouting, and so I was able to spend some time with him and get to know him a little bit, and um, was able to learn a lot from him in a, in a short period of time. So he's he's someone who again has been around forever. And if yeah. someone's been around forever and is still making money at a high level, he's got to be doing something right, you know. Oh, most whether, definitely, whether you like it or not, he, 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 definitely whether you like it or not, because hey, yeah, he's been been around. He's been on pretty much every major uh, promotion. You know, he well maybe not so much on a you know on screen, but he's been involved with pretty much every major promotion. You know, yep. he did stuff with WWE. He's, he had one hell of a career with TNA, Impact, whatever you're wanting to call him anymore. Just going back to TNA. He's, yep. you know, doing this stuff with AEW Ring of Honor and, you know, the stuff they got going with uh, Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. That, I mean, they're getting a reaction out of people. And, you know, hell, whether you like it or not, He's doing a good job with where they have him going. And hell, if somebody's going to pay me that much money to play somebody that is probably going to annoy some people, I'm going to enjoy it. Right. And another thing I, I put some weight behind as far as, you know, like kind of what we're talking about is wrestling has historically been a business where bigger people are more successful, right? And I know it's gotten yeah, away yeah. from the monsters. So, you know, someone who is 5'8", 5'10", 6' foot even can make a really good career out of this and go absolutely to the top. Look at look at MJF, for example, Daniel Bryan. Yeah. These are guys who are extremely successful and the best at their craft. And they're not, quote unquote, body yeah. guys necessarily or monsters. Sanjay definitely falls into that. And I would say he's even smaller in stature than, than those guys are. Oh, and so he's definitely. been successful at this level for that long, being the size that he is and having that disadvantage, absolutely he's doing something right, you know? So you also oh, got yeah. to consider that. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. He's doing he's doing amazing things. And I, good Lord, I remember back with, uh, you know, the TNA run that he had, some of the crazy stuff that they were pulling off. Incredible. Incredible. Oh, yeah. yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. And um, yeah, very, very impressed. Lots of respect for, for Sanjay. Excuse me. I got to stop. All right. We're back. And well, you might uh, think, you know, yeah, there was, that was a bit of an abrupt cutoff and you are wearing something completely different. Well, there was a bit of a family emergency that kind of caused me to have to make an, a, bit, a bit of an abrupt stop, I'll admit. But thank you to my guest here for the understanding of it all. And we are back here to finish up because, you know, those that watch the show, you'll know that we only have one category left here. My random questions where some might be wrestling related, some might not be. Some might have absolutely nothing to do with anything we've talked about so far. That's why I call this random questions. Yep. 
And hey, nothing wrong with it. We'll just call it a wardrobe change, right? We'll 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 go with that. We'll go with that. Yep. So yeah, these questions, like I said, they're random. I keep a couple in here because I, I I love the questions. I love the stories behind them. But I give you the question, you give me first answer that pops into your head. Seems reasonable. Let's do it. All right. This is one of them that I like to keep in here as much as possible. Because I just I love hearing the stories and I've heard some wacky ones. Craziest in match moment for you. Craziest in match moment. Okay, so uh gosh, almost a year and a half now, I had my second shoulder surgery on my right shoulder. And I originally, so I got it done in high school, originally dislocated it in training during COVID, and then um it was good for about eight months. And then in March of 2021, did it again. And it started happening frequently throughout the year. By the end of the year, I dislocated it 10 times and finally decided to get surgery because I basically sneeze and it would mm. go out of place. And so this was in a, um, I just won the cash in the case ladder match at FSW and which is basically money in the bank. So yeah. it was my first, uh, first match after that. And I had dislocated my shoulder for the first time in that cash in the case ladder match. So here we are a couple weeks later, uh, shoulders feeling good. I've been training and I, um, I get thrown out of the ring. I hang on, skin the cat back in, and then I get clotheslined over. Well, on the way over, shoulder goes out. And I quickly pop it back in. Here comes my opponent doing an incredible backflip over the ropes onto me. Shoulder goes out again. Oh, no. It took me a minute to get it back in there, um, and that was – that was one of the more shocking, crazy moments I've had in wrestling. And there's a couple others where I dislocated it and couldn't get it back in quite so easily and had to really yank on it to get it back in. Oh. But for me, the first thing that comes to mind is anything shoulder dislocating related. Yeah, I can only imagine. I I know one of the craziest one of the craziest moments that I've witnessed was a kind of similar in a way, and this promotion's version of Money in the Bank, where the, I'll use this as an example, ladder bridge between guardrail, ring apron, and I see him, and guys like one of my best friends had this other guy on him, like Seamus, and I believe it's called the White Noise, where like the, the legs are up here, head down here, sort of thing, okay. and I see him. I see him look down at the ladder because they're on the ring apron, and I'm like, uh-uh. No, the, he literally leaps ladder folds like a V and I'm like, yeah. Oof. Ow. Oof. yeah, those, the ladder ones are scary, man. And another story that comes to mind based on what you said was in that cash in the case ladder match. Um, there were two guys that we had a huge, the ceilings are really tall. So the ladder to get to the case was very big. And so two guys, uh, Eli Everfly, Jay Vidal, they were, kind of going up opposite end, someone had laid a ladder down between the rungs of the ladder and the bottom rope of the oh, ring. Oh, that, that's some, I've seen some similar, yeah. Yep, so what ended up happening, and I'm on the opposite side of the ring, my shoulder, I had just gotten it back in, so I was on the outside, just kind of nursing myself, and I'm, I'm looking up to see what happens, and Jay Vidal Sunset flips over the top of the ladder, power bombs Eli Everfly into the ladder, and everything just, like, shot out of the ring. And so Eli disappeared, Jay disappeared, and the ladders went out of the ring, and we thought everyone was literally dead. Oh. Um, Eli was dead for the rest of the match, and I, I ended up beating Jay in the in the climb for the for the case. But God <laughs> damn, that was one of the wow. first times I definitely thought somebody was dead. Yeah, I I would have been the same damn way myself. Mm. Like I just have that image playing in my head. I'm and like killed. Oh um. JR, when I forget what match it was, it might have been the Mankind Undertaker Hell in a Cell where he's like, as God is my witness, he's broken. Yeah. Out. That yep. right there. Yep. yep. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, when I was talking about how I can outsmart, outthink my opponents, mm -hmm. you don't see me doing that stuff. I don't need to go up there and risk it because I got it all right here. And I don't need, I need to save my body and not do those crazy things so I can last a little bit longer than those guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the same time, to... respect for doing that. You won't oh. see me up there if I can help it. 
Oh yeah, no, it, it's it's cool to be able to see people that are able to pull that off, but then there's also that certain kind of pretty cool factor when you know after the aftermath of the move where everybody's like, oh yeah, and then you get a sneak around it and not have to do any of that. That that's yeah. some. Yeah. Hey, you got a? Is that Tippy Cow? Spotted cow. Spotted cow, that's what it is. With the good old Wisconsin beer. Oh yeah. I I'm I'm about to run out. My dad took me to my first ever game up at Lambeau Field back in January. Okay. It's funny that my first game up there was Aaron Rodgers' last. Oh, there you go. Okay. But oh yeah, and I still got the game program up there. But my brother had been asking my dad to get him some and then my dad was like have you tried this so i tried it and then i think he bought more than i did but i bought like two cases of bottles and then like another case of cans it's good stuff it's good stuff oh yeah i think i only got one left so i'm like damn it i need to figure out a way to get more yeah time for a road trip oh yeah all right well kind of a good segue here Another question that I'd like to keep in here as much as possible, because I would feel weird with the name of a show like Drinking at Moe's if I didn't have this question in here. Favorite drink, whether it be alcoholic or non or one of each, because I've had plenty of people on that for one reason or another don't drink. So I always try to say just because it says Drinking at Moe's does not mean it has to be alcoholic. Even if, you know, most of the time for me, it is. Yep. Well, I'm going to, my first thought is to just go through all the categories and kind of just rapid fire at you. So favorite uh, hard alcoholic drink, vodka, soda, unless I'm smoking a cigar that I'm drinking whiskey with it. Mm. Uh, Favorite, favorite beer, favorite light beer, Coors Light. Favorite wine, definitely red over white. White's for teenage girls and sissy boys. Um, What else? Let's see. Favorite non-alcoholic drink right now is probably pre-workout. And then you can't go wrong with a good old glass of cold ice water from a from a well. Okay. Yeah, I've I've been kind of more of a beer guy, really. But there are some drinks out there like uh uh it was Damon I for some reason, having a brain fart right now, but Jack and Coke with a grenadine. It basically tastes like Jack and Cherry Coke. Yeah. Love it. So, like, if I'm ever having whiskey, it's normally that. Yeah. And then, I mean, I I can't lie. I do enjoy a good margarita from time to time. I got some of the Rocks tequila that I swear you need to limit how many margaritas you're going to have putting some of that in there. Yeah. Because it's... It's strong, but it is so smooth that, like, you put that in a margarita, you can barely tell there's alcohol in it. So, in other words, it's trouble. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That and George Clooney's one, Casamigos. Oh, yeah. Smooth Cas- as hell, but yeah. damn, a little bit trouble when you mix that into anything because you can barely tell there's alcohol in that damn thing. Yeah. And that's uh, so talking about margaritas, that's the nice part about being in Phoenix is like the huge Mexican influence we have here. And it's only a three hour, 45 minute, four hour drive to Rocky Point. And so, uh, you know, if you live here and don't appreciate a good margarita, you're out of your mind because there's so many good ones. And, and oh, Mexican, yeah. You know, it's, yeah, definitely oh, yeah. delicacy and, and nice to oh, meet yeah. you. And then going beer, I've, I mean, spotted cow, I'm drinking one right now, but, uh, the ones that are more widely available, I you brought up Coors. I love a good Coors banquet. That is a good Ooh, beer. the banquet beer. Yeah, that is a good damn beer. That Kona Big Wave or their Longboard. Okay, both amazing. And then one not so widely available, but still Stone Cold's Broken Skull American Lager. Okay, pretty good, I, huh? I think 
last time I saw it, it was same same trip up to Green Bay, but closest I've seen it available is Kansas City, which I do have a brother in law that lives there, so I could have a way to get it. Yep. Okay. What about like the the heavier beers? Do you like IPAs? Do you like stouts? Do you like wheat? I am an equal opportunity beer drinker. You put it in front of me more often than not, I will drink it. But um, stout's good. Wheat, I'm not so much into IPAs, but I will drink them. Yeah. Yeah, like one if you're having dinner and a beer maybe, but they're they're heavy. And so if I'm eating with it, I usually don't like to drink one because I like to feel full from my food, not the, the drink I'm drinking, you know? Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Definitely. All right. Now, I have a list of places that I haven't been that I would really love to go to. What is some places you haven't been that you would like to go to, whether you're wrestling there or not? Okay. Is this uh, is this across the world, across the nation? World. World. Okay. okay. Top of my list is Scandinavia. So I am Norwegian on my maternal grandfather's side. And so I just have, I'm a history buff as well. So really getting over there and um, seeing the sites, looking at the history of Norway, Sweden, Finland, you know, that whole area of Denmark is, is really fascinating for me. And, you know, I kind of spend a lot of time in colder climates. And so, you know, I think there's going to be a level of familiarity with it. And so really been, God, since I was a kid, you know, interested in going there. And there's been places where, I've always wanted to go, but then I kind of, you know, interest change and things like that. But that's one that's never changed. So, yeah, Norway, Sweden, um, anywhere up there in Scandinavia, I'm really interested in checking out. Oh, de- I can totally understand that. I, I've, I, I'm part German, I believe, on, I forget what side of my family. But the closest I've ever been to Germany is seeing Frankfurt through the Frankfurt airport windows. Okay. <laughs> so it's go. like, I've always wanted to go over there and actually explore some of that. And then there's always, you know, I'm also part Scottish and Irish. So getting to see that, but I've never been, I've never even seen other than on TV. Yeah. The other places that I've always wanted to go to, like when we're talking worldwide, I've actually seen these places, but for one reason or another, didn't actually get to spend any time there and hell they both happened on my deployment actually yeah. one we were anchored off of japan some people got to go for what i forget what but all i could do was see like it's there oh, man. yeah it's right there. there i'm like so close but i didn't get to go on land the other one was definitely uh um Egypt. Oh Seeing, like yeah. the pyramids and stuff. Yeah. Because on my deployment, we had to go up to Israel and we yeah. had to go up through the Suez Canal. Okay. And like literally Egypt right there. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just one of those things is like, man, I was so close. And you know, just to be able to be like, hey, I was close that one time, but now I get to go back. Because, you know, with Japan, I've always thought, hey, it'd be cool to go to a show like like Wrestle Kingdom. Right. And I've seen these uh, these YouTube videos of, like, these, these capsule hotels. They're like, these really small-ass things. But it's like, to be able to go there and experience all of that would be something that I'd be like, hmm, that would be cool. But then I'm with you and the uh, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, the, the whole Scandinavian area, I have, as of late, really been getting into uh, the show Vikings. And, you know, oh, seeing... Great show, great show, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, getting into a lot of that culture, which, you know... That's where it started, right up there. So yeah. to get to ex- actually see some of those places would be cool because I've been to, I've been to Rome. I've gotten to see, you know, the, um, damn it, Saint Peter's. 
yeah. I've I've been able to go to uh, where was it uh, Pompeii and you okay. actually actually walking those streets that got destroyed by that volcano. Yep, that's cool. I've been to Athens and getting to see all the places where like the original Olympics yep. were, and so getting to see some of that on a place that I haven't personally ever been to yet would be pretty awesome because I consider myself somewhat of a history buff. Yeah. And the, like the cool thing about those places is, you know, we have tons of history and great history, by my opinion, in the U S but we're so young, right? Like the revolutionary war was 250 years ago. And those places like the Viking age was like 800 AD to around 1200. So we're talking over a thousand years old compared to our 250, 300 year old history, man. So it's, oh, yeah. Like it's just a whole nother realm of, of learning and experience. And so, um, and that's, that goes for anywhere in Europe, let alone the pyramids, who knows how exactly how old those are. So that's oh, it's yeah. just like history is great here, but man, what a different ball game it is across the sea, you know? Oh, most totally. Like I've, I've been lucky enough a lot through my deployment, like pretty much all over Southeast Asia, like Thailand, Singapore, sure. Philippines, all over. So there's, lots of great history all throughout the world so to get to experience some of it would yeah. be pretty cool yeah. like oh one before we get on to the next question the one that was kind of surreal for me was i've been to pearl harbor twice okay and you know through the navy and to walk around there and just think about everything that happened, especially that day back with World War II, was just like, dude, to, yeah. to think that all of that was going on right in the area where I'm walking right now yeah. was something surreal, I guess, like I said, yeah. best way I could put it. Man, not to get too off topic, but... I, if you're someone who would believe in ghosts, that had to be, you know, quite the experience because if, if ghosts are real, not saying they are or aren't, but if they're real, that's gotta be a, like a hot spot, you know? Oh, I, I would definitely imagine so. And I've actually had people ask me if I did and I, I can never say one way or another if I do or don't. Yeah. I can say that I've definitely had experiences that, uh, it sure as hell would explain a lot. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. It definitely had some of those where it's like, feels like somebody is right behind you. You yeah. know, the, the hairs standing up and stuff. And you know, you look back and nobody's there. Right. Like right. I, one at my parents' house even was literally, um, I was asleep. My room was down in the basement. And all of a sudden, I hear somebody scream for me, like, my name clear as day. I go upstairs, like, I, I'm taking a blanket because I'm, like, half asleep. I go upstairs, everybody's asleep. No oh. doors open, nothing. So I took my blanket and I slept on the couch. Yeah, I don't blame you. So I'm like, I am not going back down there. Yep, I bet. All right. Now, next one. Okay. Not only am I a bit of a history buff, I'm also a, somewhat of a movie buff. What would you say is a person that would play you in a movie? Person that would, so an actor that would Act betray yeah. me in a movie. Ooh. Maybe in my later years, um, I would say John Hamm. I've been. Uh, I, you know what? Seeing you right now, I, I, I can see that. I yep. can definitely see it. Well, Don Draper vibes. That's yeah. As me as a as a middle aged man, I think he would be a good representation of that. Um, and he's got the the looks to support the looks of class. So I think it's a good match. Let's go. Let's stick with that one. Um, well, I'm trying to think of a younger younger version who might play it. I don't know. Good good thought for another time, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We'll stick with John Hamm. And, you know, what kind of just spin off of that favorite movie of yours? 
two favorite movies that, that first come to mind, uh, Blow with Johnny Depp and then The Wolf of Wall Street. And The Wolf of Wall Street is it's such a fun movie. It, it hypes me up before like every big exam, every big, you know, um, thing I had to do throughout my graduate school experience. <laughs> I always went and pounded on my chest that scene with Matthew McConaughey and Leo mm-hmm. in the restaurant, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, man. I got to go watch that, man. It's so good. And I got to tell you a quick story about that. So right when the movie came out, I think it came out either like late in late in the year or early in the year because I was, uh, me and a bunch of people were going to Mexico for spring break when I was an undergrad. And the resort we went to in Cancun was like this big college party resort. So like, I felt like every school from the Big Ten had representation there with a huge group. And so just an absolute chaotic mess, but so fun. And I remember one point distinctly in the pool, a group of people started doing that. And then everyone else, there were probably 200 people in mm-hmm. unison, uh, you know, doing the whole thing. And I was like, this is the coolest <laughs> <thing> ever. <laughs> oh, man. That might influence why it's one of my favorite movies. I had that cool memory attached to it. But yeah, um, yeah those are the two, Blow and uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Both both good. I do love Wolf of Wall Street. My, my personal favorite, and the, I got a running joke with this one, Forrest Gump. Okay. Love that movie. Classic. I've seen it so many times that I've act, I've been to some of the actual Bubba Gump restaurants. Yeah. And, and the servers will ask you trivia questions about the movie. I've seen the movie so many times I can answer their questions before they're done asking them. No way. Yeah. What's the what's the hardest question they ever asked? Oh God, that is a good one because it's been so long since I've been the one. I can't even I can't even remember because it, I like I've literally seen it so many times. I think one of them had something to do with the 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 school that um he he was at where they let the first uh black student enroll oh, University and, of Alabama right. I, I'm wanting to say that, but yeah, it was something about that, and I was still able to get it. Maybe not when before they were done asking it, but I definitely remember. I I haven't gotten one wrong yet. Nice. I've I, so I've got a hot take on Forrest Gump. I want your thoughts on it. I think it's one of the greatest movies ever made. One great one of the greatest movies I've ever seen for sure. My hot take is that Jenny's kind of a bitch. Like yeah. Jenny kind of sucks, right? Oh, like yeah. the whole movie, if we objectively look at all of the things she does to Forrest, she's a terrible person. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. He way too forgiving. Way too forgiving. Besides letting him sit next to her on the bus, a lot of a lot of shitty things she did to him throughout the years. Oh god, yeah. Like I've joked about before I met my wife that I've been dumped by so many different ways that i could write a book yeah he could do that with the amount of shitty things that she did to him exactly yeah 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 yeah. that and one of my other favorite ones i'm i'm wanting to say it was i'm wanting to say it was we were soldiers a mel gibson i believe vietnam movie but there was a a point in there where they were doing some training and um the two guys are walking towards each other, one higher ranking. And he says the, the lower ranking one, you know, as they do, you know, greets them, salutes them. They're like, good morning, sir. And he's like, how do you know what kind of goddamn day it is? <laughs> I literally had a drill instructor in boot camp pretty much do that line. Do you? Somebody, said, somebody said, good morning to the officer. And he's like, is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. That's so awesome. like that that little personal story for me with that one. I got you. I got you. All right. Now, last but not least here, best advice for anybody wanting to get into wrestling. Take it seriously and treat it like a business. So, uh one thing I tell a lot of the kids who go through our school at the Arizona Pro Wrestling Training Center, um there it's it's like in tiers, right? So you have to interview then you have to pass the tryout. Then you have to go through six weeks of conditioning on the outside before you even step foot in the ring. 
And when they actually pass the six weeks and are able to step foot in the ring, one of the things I've told them is, look, you just got accepted for your dream job at the entry level. It's you got a long way to work up to the top, but you have to treat it like a business. You have to treat it like your job or else you're just going to beat your body up. And, you, you know, you're probably not going to see as much for it, which there are some people that if they just want to wrestle locally and, and do that, fine. But most people coming in have these big lofty goals. And so for me, that was a helpful way to understand it and look at it. This is a business. Hence why I dress up always. Hence why I'm always looking good because I'm not going to go to work in pajamas and a cutoff. You know what I mean? <laughs> so when, when I talk to people, um, you know, complete sentences with accurate punctuation and emails or, you know, communications that I, with promoters and et cetera, et cetera. And it just, that's something that's really helped me get to the place that I'm at. And I think looking at that from early on is going to really help you set goals, reach those goals and continue kind of leapfrogging your goals throughout, throughout your career, whatever it might be. So oh, yeah, very long good. Story very short, good. treat it like a business. Yeah. Very, very good advice. I know, Hell, I've, I, I've even kind of used some of it with the podcast already because all the things that you mentioned with the training, I mentioned uh, Gabriel Gallo talking to him. He went over all that. And I'm like, you know what? That is actually a good way to do and run training because then you know damn well that person is 100% ready for that, for that first match because there's too many – shows out there where there's people that you're like why are they there right now yeah but then yeah. i've had times with the the podcast where you know i kind of i with uh trying to figure out the right way i wanted to put it but with like how i reached out to you with the you know my list where i you know introducing myself and, you know, listing some of the notable names that I've, that I've uh, talked to, some of the promotions that I've done work with, and just being like, here I am. Yep. Yep. Y yeah. You're communicating like a normal person to me. And that's, you know, I was like, okay, he, he put together a great pitch. I'm going to look through it. I'm going to respond back to him and we're going to work something out. Because so many people just like incomplete sentences, incomplete punctuation, um, short version of words. And I'm like, what do you want me to do with this? I'm not, I'm not going to respond to this. Thank oh. you for your try harder next time. You know? Oh, and so, oh, yeah, yeah I, I really appreciated the message you sent me. It was great. And um, quickly, you know, going back to the, the training program here in Phoenix, it's like it goes both ways. Not only does that help the wrestlers, but how many promoters or trainers out there will take money from any kid off the street and then they'll be gone after a day. So these guys are not only doing it so the kids are ready, but they're also doing a service to anyone who is just ready to throw their money away but not really knowing what they're getting into. They're making sure that you fully understand what you're getting into and are committed before they're going to take your money, which I really appreciate. Good oh, people. Oh, totally. And then I know Gabriel Gallo, he told me about some of the other aspects – not just the in ring side of stuff, teaching like you know, setting up the the lights, the sound, and all this, and then you you think when you, you finally get into where you're going out to different shows, you have this ability where if like something were to go wrong with the lights or the sound or whatever it might be, you got yeah. training in how to deal with that, so you help them out. Boom, you got an instant ticket to get booked there again because you were able to help with something other than just the in-ring product. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, really well-rounded training experience there at the Arizona Pro Wrestling Training Center. Really, really cool to be a part of it. Most definitely. All right, well, that is about all I have. But before we go, where can people find you social media wise? So if they don't already have their eyes on you, they can go ahead and get them there. At Instagram, I am at I am class C L A S. Twitter, at I am class. Facebook, Christopher Landon Anthony Streeter. YouTube, Christopher Landon Anthony Streeter. Any of those work? I've got links on 
pretty much each profile to the other profiles. So if you find one, you'll find them all. And, you know, give me a follow up. Very inspirational. Always posting videos and pictures of myself and, you know, gives you something to strive for. So if you if you follow me, you'll probably be a better version of yourself. Not quite like me, but definitely mm -hmm. better than what you have now. You, you, you don't want to give it too much. One of those, like, with the, the teacher versus student things where it's like, I've taught you everything you know, but you don't know everything I know. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> and we will get well, all... Hey, oh, man. I, I'm just going to say, I appreciate you having me on. This was, this was a lot of fun. And, um, and I know it's a day early, but thank you for serving. Happy Veterans Day. And I uh, really appreciate your service. It's awesome, man. Thank, thank you. It was an uh, honor and a privilege of a lifetime. Yeah. I probably wouldn't do the boot camp over again, but I, yeah, I would do it most of it all over again. Yep. There you go. <laughs> there you go. But we will get the links to all of those in the description. But like I said, that's all I have. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you for being so understanding of that little issue that came up. But also best of luck out there with, you know, everything you got with wrestling, with the Arizona Pro Wrestling Training Center, and everything wrestling and beyond. I appreciate it. You're the man. Thanks, Big Bone.